Hello everyone, welcome to this module on writing essentials. This is lecture 4 in this series on sentences. In this video, we'll be looking at the types of sentences based on their purpose and how do we use them. So, we'll be learning about the types of sentences like statements, positive and negative statements, questions, and also how to answer to questions, imperative sentences, and exclamation sentences. Now broadly based on the purpose that we write sentences, sentences can be divided into four types. The first one is statements. Statements are sentences that are made or written to give information. For example, you took a photo. Statements can also be negative statements. For example, you did not take a photo. The other type of sentence is questions. And the purpose of questions is to ask for information. Did you take a photo? And of course, another type of sentence is the imperative sentence, which are generally used to give orders, suggestions, etc. For example, take a photo. And the fourth type of sentences is the exclamation sentences, which are generally used to express feeling or emotions. What a nice photo. Once we look at these different types of sentences, one thing we come to notice is the word order in each type of sentence is different. And of course, the purpose is also different. So now let's take a closer look at each type of sentence and try to understand how to construct them. Now let's start with statements. Now the basic use of a statement is to give information. For example, I am reading a newspaper. This is a positive sentence. sentence. Now the word order in statements is subject plus verb and then comes the object or complement. I am reading a newspaper. The subject is I. The verb is am reading and the object is a newspaper. There are many different uses of statements, not just to give information, but statements can be used to appreciate someone like you are doing the right thing or express gratitude like I'm very grateful or also show consolation to somebody like it was bad it was bad luck you didn't pass the exam or it can also be used to suggest like I want you to try harder or also sometimes it can be used in a form of an advice or an order. I need to know your plans. So these are the many different types of different uses of statements. Now coming to negative statements. The most basic kind of negative statement we use NOT not or its shortened form NT before the first auxiliary verb or the helping verb. For example, some people have not read the book. Here we find that not is written after the first helping verb that is have. So we write the auxiliary or the helping verb and not together as one word. 
So let's try to understand the word order of a negative statement. So here we understand that the word order is subject and then we have written the helping verb that is have and then write not and we write the helping verb and not together as one word. Then we write the main verb and finally the object or the complement. So one thing we understand in a negative statement is unlike a positive statement where we can or may not have a helping verb, we do have a helping verb to make out a negative sentence or a statement. Now let's look at some examples. If he say was called, the negative form would be was not called and the shortened form would be wasn't called. Have read, have not read, haven't read. Might have given, might not have given, mightn't have given. Do like, do not like, don't like. Did study, did not study, or didn't study. Now there are many other words besides not which have a negative meaning and which can be used in place of not to convey the same effect. Let's look at some sentences to understand how other words also help us in forming negative statements. The patient is no better, which means is not better. Few people are interested, which again means very less. We seldom eat out, that means not often. There was nowhere to park, that means not a place available to park. So these type of words like no, few, rarely, seldom, nowhere, none, no one, nothing, never, no longer, hardly, scarcely, neither, nor, all this convey negative meaning. So we can use all of these words in place of not to write a negative statement. Now let's come to the second category of types of sentences, that is the questions. Now observe these questions that are on the screen. Where are you going? Do you go to college? Could you come over here, please? Now what do you observe about the purpose of a question? Yes. Now the most basic use of a question is to ask for information. Now questions can be of two types. There are the questions which are formed using the WH words like what, where, when, which, how. And then you can also form questions using uh, the helping verbs which are also called as the yes or no questions. The yes or no questions begin with the helping verb like is, do, have, were, or, and we start a sentence using them at the beginning. Whereas the WH questions begin with the question word like where, what, and so on. Now let's look at this example. Now, a statement can be turned into a question. It hurts just here. And the question of that would be, where does it hurt? This has happened before. And the question would be, has this happened before? And we observe the first form was, was formed using the WH word. Whereas the second form is a yes or no question. And it started with a helping word. Now in most questions, there is 
inversion of subject and the helping verb. That means the position of a subject and the helping verb isn't changed from a statement to a question. For example, you are leaving today. Now this is a statement. And when you form a question out of it, you're writing it in a fashion, are you leaving today? So the positions of you and are have been changed. So the helping verb is brought before the subject and it starts the question and it is used to begin the question. Similarly, we can sit here and when we form a wh word question, the same pattern is observed. Where can we sit? Where can we sit? And once again, the helping verb can comes after the wh word and before the subject we. If there are more than one helping verbs in a sentence, then only the first one comes before the subject. For example, I could have reserved a seat. Now we observe that we have two helping verbs in this statement. One is could and the second is have. Now if you are changing it into, it into your question, then only the first helping verb that is could comes before the subject I to make it into a question. Could I have reserved a seat? So always remember if there are more than one helping verbs or auxiliaries in a sentence and you are making it into a question, then only the first one is made to come before the subject while forming the question. But there are some sentences where we don't find helping verbs. For example, in the simple tenses. But in the simple tenses, tense sentences, we generally form questions by using the helping verb do. For example, you like train journeys. Actually, the verb helping verb do is implied in this sentence. You like train journeys, which, which actually means, which conveys the meaning that you do like train journeys. So in order to make a question of this simple present tense sentence, what we do is we assume the do that is part of the sentence and we use that helping verb do to form the question. So you like train journeys, which actually means you do like train journeys. Now we're using do, we form the question as do you like train journeys? Similarly, he likes train journeys, which means he's he does like train journeys. That means the question would be, does he like train journeys? Now let's come to understand the WH words and how the questions are formed. Now there are many WH words which are used to form questions of which the most common are who, what and which. Now there is a little bit of confusion to students when to use who, what or which. Now let's look at their usage. Who always refers to people. Which can refer to people or to something not human. Whereas what refers mostly to something not human. But it can refer to people when it comes before a noun. So what we understand from this is that who, when we use who, it should always refer to people. But in case of which, sometimes it can refer to people and sometimes something that is not human, like things or animals. But as what 
mostly refers something that is not human so things or animals now let's look at some sentences which give us that explanation who who is your maths teacher so it's talking about a human which teacher do you have here teacher is human so which teacher do you have is which is referring to human similarly which can also refer to non-human things like which to which supermarket is the cheapest now when we use what what book are you reading what do you do in the evenings we use what to refer to non-human things but sometimes when a noun follows what like what idiot wrote this so it can be used to talk about humans but not always so now let's come to the uses of what or which because they both can be used to talk about humans as well as sorry non-humans so when should we use what and when should we use which when we are referring to non-human things or items now we use what when there is an indefinite which means a large number of possible answers we use which when there is a definite number that means often small number of possible answers for example which way should i go that means only one of the ways which could be right or left or north or south or east or west so here which conveys the definite word the so if somebody would ask you which way i should you which which way i should go you might probably say the left side so it conveys the definite word the whereas what talks about large number of possible answers so it generally relates to the indefinite article a what sport do you play so it it means a sport which could be any sport so it could be tennis golf football cricket etc so when there are a large number of possible answers we, it's, it is better to use what and then where, where there is a often a small number of possible answers we can use which now let's do this activity so here we have two parts of sentences divided and you have to join them and each in each of this sentence you have either what or which and okay so let's look at the answers is that the university which has the famous chemistry department I don't see why we can't do what I want for a change I have just heard a story which made me cry I can't understand what they are saying I got a new jumper for my birthday which wasn't what I asked for isn't that what you wanted now if you observe in the cases where what is used what you wanted what they're saying what I want there could be many number of possible answers but when we use which which made me cry which wasn't what I asked for which has the famous chemistry department the possible answers are very few hence we use which and more importantly you are referring to the definite article the in when you are using which we can give answers to question we can sometimes answer with a simple yes or no is it raining 
Yes, it is. It would be a positive answer. We can also give a negative answer like no, it isn't. Have you finished? Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Can we turn right here? Yes, we can. No, we can't. But sometimes questions could be requests, offers, invitations and suggestions. And they may not, it may not be proper to just say yes or no. Can I borrow your pen, please? Sure, of course. Would you like a chocolate? Yes, please. Thank you. But when the answer is only negative to your request or an invitation, we certainly need to give some explanation. For example, if I want to say yes, then it's okay. But if I want to say no to this sentence, can I borrow your pen, please? So if you, because you want to say no, your answer need to contain some explanation like, sorry, I'm using it to fill this form in. So always remember, when you are trying to give a negative answer to a request or an offer or an invitation, try to put some explanation in your answer. Now let's come to the third type of sentences. That is the imperatives. The imperative form is the base form of the verb. That means we use the first form of the verb to write or make imperative sentences. It is a second person form. So it is always uh, spoken about a person before you or the person directly to whom you are speaking to. For example, when I say come in, I mean that you should come in. So the you should is implied in the sentence come in. So the word order of an imperative sentence is verb plus object or complement. So the verb starts an imperative sentence. The negative is we use do not or don't plus the base form that is verb and for emphasis we use sometimes do plus the base form for example do come in for emphasis or don't come in the negative. Now positive, negative and emphatic these are the three ways in which imperative sentences can be constructed. Come in. Read the instructions carefully. Positive imperatives. Do not remove this book from the library. Don't make so much fuss. These are the negative imperatives. Do be careful. Now it's an emphatic form of an imperative sentence. Now where can we use these imperative sentences. Imperative sentences can be used to make suggestions or advice. Why don't you spend a year working before you go to college? It can also be used in the formation of slogans or advertisements like Save the Tiger. They can be used to form warnings and reminders look out there's a car coming or informal offers and invitations have a chocolate or to give instructions and directions like go along here turn left at the lights or even expressing good wishes like have a nice holiday now we have learned up to now how to form positive sentences, negative sentences, and also how to form questions and imperatives. Now, let's do an activity and make different types of sentences from what are given. If you look at the first one, it is a positive 
statement I have done the homework so if you want to make a negative statement it would be I haven't done the homework to form the question it would be have I done the homework now let's look at the fourth type of sentences that is the exclamations exclamation is a sentence spoken with emphasis and feeling they are gently used to express the emotional feelings of a person now if you look at this question how warm is the water it can be turned into the exclamation how warm the water is which means the water is really very warm it expresses the feeling of the person so any phrase or short sentence can be an exclamation like oh no lovely stop look out oh my god all of these short phrases can also be an exclamation we generally use uh, denote exclamation by putting the exclamation mark at the end of the phrase there is usually a greater rise or fall of the voice than in other types of sentences. We often use how or what to form exclamatory sentences. But there is a pattern in how we use how or what. For example, we can say how lucky you are, how quickly the time passed, now we are using how, after how, there can be an adjective or an adverb. See, how lucky, lucky is an adjective. How quickly, quickly is an adverb. So generally after how, the adjective or an adverb follows. Or sometimes how can also modify a verb. How we laughed. So it's actually followed by a verb in case of what what a journey we had what lovely plaza these are and after what we find that there can be a noun phrase with a or an or without article the noun phrase can also have an adjective An exclamation can also be just a phrase with how or what. How lucky, what a journey, what lovely flowers. Now these are all exclamations. Yeah, now we have come to the conclusion of this video. Now let's sum up things. Now in this video we learned that sentences based on their purpose can be of four basic types statements, questions, imperatives, and exclamations. Now, each type of sentence has a very specific word order. Statements are sentences that are used to give information. They can be positive statements or negative statements. Questions are the sentences which are used to ask for information. Questions can be of two types. Questions formed using the helping verbs that are yes or no type of questions or asking for detailed information that are the WH word type of questions. Imperatives are sentences which can be used to suggest, command, warn, advise, etc. And exclamations or sentences that are used to convey a feelings or emotions. How and what are basically used to form exclamation sentences.